Well, hey there. So you guys have probably already figured out I'm a biker after that, that intro, right? Well, my biker family and friends call me Bad Bob, and I've been riding motorcycles since about the time that dinosaurs ro roamed the earth. It's been, it's been a long time, but I've kind of lost track of it. Um, I've been with Baca. It's, you know, I discovered their mission probably about 10 years ago, and that mission is to create a safe environment for children who have been abused. And, you know, as a father, it's hard for me to understand how anybody could ever abuse a child. There's stats out there floating around that, that are just absolutely crazy. On average, one out of four girls are sexually abused by the time they're 18. One of six boys are abused by the time they're 18. Now that's a problem. Bikers Against Child Abuse was established around 22 years ago by a therapist in Utah. He worked with children and happened to ride motorcycles. He quickly discovered that abused children seem to light up around motorcycles. And they always felt safe around bikers. It, it, was, it was absolutely amazing what happened. Now we're today, we're in 17 countries around the world, and we're in 47 states here in the US. And we exist for the purpose to provide safety, comfort, aid, and support to children who have been sexually, physically, and emotionally abused. We're a large organization that spans the globe. And I'm here tonight to, to tell you a little bit about it. We work with children in conjunction with local agencies and state agencies who are in place to protect children. Our, we, we get referrals from not only these agencies, but from judges. Different events where people meet members of BACA and from families who have abused children themselves and have heard of us. We get these referrals. We go to court with the children. Can you imagine being a child seven years old and telling your story of abuse to a judge or to a jury? A court of law is a scary enough place for adults, but put yourself in their shoes as a seven-year-old and imagine what it would take to have to tell their story. We help them get ready. We go to court with them. We help them get the courage to tell their story, to testify. And we're pretty successful at it. When we get a referral, our, we have, each chapter has a uh, child liaison. Our local ch child liaison will review the situation. And if they feel it's something we should get involved in, they will pull together our initial contact team of three to four members. And then we'll go visit that child, get to know that child and their parent or their guardian. And after getting to know them, if we feel it's something that will really fit our mi mission and it gets approved, then we put together what's called a level one intervention. And what happens then is 10, 20, 40, 50 or more bikes will come rumbling into that child's neighborhood in one morning. We wake up everybody, they know we're coming. But what's priceless is to watch that child's face when they realize as we come rolling up that we're not only there to protect them but to welcome them into their new Baca family. We give them a vest or a cut. We give them their own personal road name to identify them and help them feel part of the family. It might be something like Jedi Knight or Supergirl, but it's their own personal road name. We also have a little ceremony. And in that ceremony, where is it here? feels like a magic trick. 
we, pull up, we, we get a little baka bear. And with that baka bear, we pass it to each member and we put a hug in it. And we fill this bear full of hugs. And when we give it to that child, we tell them that the bear's full of hugs and they watch this happen. And we tell them, if ever you feel scared or lonely, pick up your bear and take a hug out of it. And if at any time you feel that bear is getting empty, give us a call and we'll come back and we'll fill it up. In, in between sessions, many of the people that were here and maybe some here tonight, tonight fill this bear full of hugs and we're going to give it to a child next Saturday when I, when I get home. One night we got a call from a girl and this happens all around the world. We got a call from a girl and she said her bear was running low. The following morning, about 20 of us were on our bikes and we rode four hours to meet up with her. And we filled it full of hugs again. And that's important because many of the children will take their bears to court with them. And when they testify, you'll see them taking a hug or two out of that bear to get the courage that they need. So that's the importance of our bear. Yeah. Thank you. On our ICTs, I, I told you a little bit of ICTs when we go to visit uh, the child. Again, that's a very important introduction to us where they get to know the bikers. And one day, I was on an ICT and four of us come pulling up to a house. And let me tell you, child abuse spreads across all demographics. They could be in some of the poorest neighborhoods. They could be in such a, uh, some of the richest neighborhoods. They could be happening in the neighborhoods where you and I live. But we come pulling up to that house, and as I'm getting off the bike, a little girl comes bouncing out of her house, about this tall. And she comes running up to me. And, and can you imagine a, a, a girl that doesn't know me is going to come running up to me? <laughs> and she looks up at me, and she goes, can I give you a hug? And I said, I said sure. And as I bent down to get on her level to hug her, she latched onto my leg before I could get down there and started hugging me so hard she was shaking. And she said, why couldn't you be here yesterday? Now, I knew what the issues were, and I, but I asked her, what happened yesterday? And she said, my daddy hurt my sister. And I knew that he'd been in jail, in jail for quite a while, but to her, it happened just yesterday. And I told her, I'm sorry I wasn't here yesterday, but we're here now. And then I started praying that when they, they did the interviews, that would be a case that we'd be able to get involved in. Well, I'll tell you, about a week later, we showed up with a bear full of hugs, and we gave it to her sister. Now, I can't talk about details of any case, but I can assure you that those two girls will never have to see their abuser again. So. Thank you, thank you. And this happens worldwide, happens everywhere. These are just common stories. Sometimes the level one isn't enough to make sure that the, that the child and the family feel safe. And in that case, what we'll do is we'll put the word out to the Baca Nation, and more of our members will show up, and we'll put a protective barrier around that home and that child to make sure that they feel safe, that they don't have to worry about anything happen to, happening to them again. And we'll do that until they're feeling good about things. Sad that that has to happen. Fortunately, it doesn't happen a lot of times, but we'll do that. We ride and we ride and we ride for the children. It's a, it's, it's a tough, but it's a very fulfilling you know, thing that, that we do for them. And, of course, we need more people helping us out. Now, I, one of the things that I find is 
amusing, if you can say amusing out of all of this. You know, when we do that protective barrier, we're there to make sure that no, that no child deserves to live in fear. Right? We want to make sure that they get that childhood back that they deserve and that they're not afraid of the world in which they live. But to the amusing part, many of them view us as big old human teddy bears riding motorcycles. You know, and that's fine. You know, that's the way they look at us. And oftentimes you'll have a kid say to you, I heard a motorcycle ride by last night and we know it was you guys checking up on us. And you know what? It might just be. So thank you, everybody, and I appreciate you listening.